Good morning, everybody. My name is Gareth Soloway, and this is The Game Plan. Monday morning, 9 a.m. Let's get right into it. All right, so markets are lower this morning across the equity side. Crypto is rallying. Great move in some of the altcoins. Last week, remember, we talked about some charts on the altcoin side, a Matic and a Cardano that were looking like they could break out of their wedge patterns. They have done just that. We're going to cover that. We're going to cover gold, and we're going to cover natural gas. I promise you guys on that one. So let's jump over here. Let's first take a look at the 10-year yield. This continues to be the most important chart in the markets. Now, what we saw in the overnight is the 10-year yield spiking up and going through the $5 level. Take a look at that, right? Piercing the 5.5% level right there, and it actually has started to reverse. Now, remember, last week I told you, $5 as an even number is a level you want to watch. For me, it's a pivotal level that if we start to see the market on yields go above it significantly, you will have something break in the system. If we can stay below and pull back, maybe, just maybe, we can avoid some catastrophic crisis in the credit markets. I don't know if we can, but we'll see if we can. So far, we've pierced 5% and we're getting pushed back down. We did see TLT initially dip pre-market. It's now coming back and almost back to the green side. So watch this 5% level. Now remember, we had a former level over here that was a topping tail. Remember when that got negated right here and then the next level got hit. Markets and technical analysis is a stepping stone. Here's your level. If it breaks, here's your next level. Ultimately, you play the probabilities at each level, but you also need to know when the level is negated. All right, so right now, 5% is your key level. If we flip over to the weekly chart and zoom out, where do we go if we break 5%? And again, these are the levels, guys. That's all there is to it. The level says that if we break 5%, we confirm above 5%. If that happens, it hasn't happened yet, we head up to this key level right here, which is this pivot top right in here. Bear with me right there. So right here and right here and right here and right here. That level gives us 5.27%. We can say 5.3%, but that would be your next level. Now, again, if we head there, I think something breaks in the system and we could have a major credit crisis. The market to me, the banking system, everything is teetering, literally borderline breaking down based on where yields are. I want to show you guys something here. I want to show you an article I came across over the weekend. This one, I don't know if you'll be able to read it, but basically what it says here, more people are missing car payments in another ominous sign for the economy. Now, what this article goes on to say here, if I bring that back up and we scroll down, is that you're now at levels. The rate hit 6.11% in September, the highest level of defaults on car loans since, get this, 1994. So we're not, like, this is what's crazy, folks. We're not even at a level where we're like, oh, we're getting back to 2008, 2009 levels. We're seeing numbers you have not seen since basically 30 years ago. And that's very concerning. Yes, the jobs numbers have been strong. Jobless claims have been strong. But the underlying belly of the economy is weakening. Now, again, remember what I've said, and I'm going to flip back to charts just so I have a better, better background here on the charts. But remember what I've said. You have two economies. You have the economy of investors. Anyone who was investing since October of last year has done well. They've weathered the storm on inflation because the markets have rallied so substantially off of those October lows. If we flip over to the NASDAQ 100, here's the NASDAQ 100. If we zoom out here, here is your October low, right? So look at the move that the markets have made. This is a massive move, folks, by the way. We're talking like 25% up move. So those people have weathered the storm. But if you're someone who doesn't have investments in the market, you've gotten crushed on inflation. Yeah, sure, your job, you have a job, but ultimately housing is too much. Credit card debt is getting overbearing. All of these factors, and now you throw in interest rates. Like, think about this. The average interest rate a year ago was like 12% on a credit card. It's now 25%. 
Think about that. Think about people that are carrying credit card balances, how they're getting slammed. Then you have obviously student loan payments coming back. There are two sets of the economies. Now I will say this is that over time, and we're already starting to see it, the NASDAQ 100 is starting to roll over and eventually those two economies will join as one and that's when you see the recession hit. And it will be rough and it will be long lasting because the Federal Reserve is not going to be able to print us out of this one because inflation still remains too high. All right, enough said on that front there, but it is an ominous sign, I agree, and something we have to monitor. Quickly looking at the U.S. dollar today, the U.S. dollar almost no movement. I continue to think the U.S. dollar still has had a top. And remember, to me, it's not a matter of what I think, what I feel. It's a matter of what the chart is telling me. As long as this trend line holds true, like even if we go back up and tag that, as long as that trend line does not break, that is the top. That's a tr top trend line. Okay, now if we break, then we as technicians say, okay, now probabilities have switched. We now start it to look for the next level above that. Very important to understand, there's no secret sauce in trading. There's no 100%. It's finding the levels and putting yourself in a position where you're with probabilities. It means you're still going to lose, but you want to lose very small versus the wins. You want seven wins out of every 10, still lose three times. But over time, when you do a thousand trades, a million trades, your overall net worth goes, I mean, just goes crazy, goes nuts. All right. Next up, let's take a look here, guys. We already talked about the QQQ here. The Qs right now are down a little bit, but as yields pull back, we're starting to see a bid. The level on the Qs is about as easy as you can find. You can see this, right? So we know our level on the Qs is right around $350. That is short-term support. Now, if that gives way, that's where trouble starts. But right now, $350 on the QQQ is the level to watch. Keeping it going, the spiders. Now, this is an interesting chart on the SPY, which is the S&P tracking ETF. So number one, what we see here is basically Friday, we came down into this previous low right here. Now, if we break lower, we have a very specific defined level where it is a major target. Now, if we go down here, I actually think you'll get a significant bounce in the market. That level again, we can see it here and I could just stretch it back. Let's go back here. Very clearly seen, we have a pivot point right here, pivot, pivot, and right through here. And that tells us that right around 412, 413 would be major technical support. All right, so again, we're watching this level today, which is right around 420, 420, 419 area. That's that low right here. Do we break it? If we break it, you start looking for 412. That would be your next significant support on a technical basis. My guess is if we do go down there, you probably see a significant bounce off of it, at least back to this upsloping trend line. Now, this is what happens with a lot of charts. They do a retrace to the scene of the crime. So what we know is we have a channel, right? You had a channel, this orange line here with this orange line up here, the pivot points, et cetera. So if we break down below that and we go here, the technical reaction would probably be a retrace to that level before the next big sell-off to the downside. So if I'm a technician and I'm looking, I'm accumulating stock here, assuming a bounce here, and then I'm unloading it as it moves back up into the levels right on the chart. Okay, next up, I want to take a look at a couple stocks, then we'll get into some crypto. Don't worry, we'll get into some com commodities. Um, I do want to take a look at uh, Tesla. Tesla continues to dip here. Now, Tesla does have a big level coming up. Remember, these are swing trade levels, potentially day trade levels. That's really up to you guys how you react to them. You can take this information and do what you will with it. I don't really care. It's up to you. I'm just here for informational purposes. All right. One thing I do see on Tesla is that we have a pivot point here, pivot point here, pivot point here, 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 and here. What that tells me is if we pierce the even number on Tesla at about 199, 198, there's significant technical support for a bounce right there. So we can very clearly see that trend line right through there that if we get to this level right in here, that's going to be potential bounce level on Tesla. So 198 to 200, we'll call it right on that front. Next up, we got to talk about um, NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA is important because 
we have that head and shoulders. Now, I've talked about this since we were all the way up here on NVIDIA, saying if we curl over, this forms that beautiful head and shoulders pattern. Now, right here is your head and shoulders, right? So one of the things we want to watch is does the head and shoulders trigger? If it triggers and it holds, and meaning it doesn't trade back above that line, this would be very, very bearish for NVIDIA. Target-wise, the target is very easily calculated. I've shown you guys this many times. You take the highest point of the head to the neckline. This is called the neckline right here, right? And again, we take that distance and we replicate it to the downside from the break point. So let's say we break here. You replicate that move down and basically it takes us down to this level right here, this gap fill right in this vicinity. Okay, so again, that gives us a very good idea of where NVIDIA could go should the neckline trigger. Now, please understand that head and shoulders patterns actually fail a fair amount of the time. The way they fail, if we trade below the neckline here and we get back above, failed, done. The calculation means nothing anymore. It has to stay below the neckline. It can retrace and test the neckline, but you can't see daily closes back above the neckline. In addition, if let's say we don't trigger and we go and take out the high of the head up here, then it fails as well. You can't have a shoulder that is higher than the head. That defeats the whole idea of a head and shoulders pattern. All right, so keep an eye on that chart. Now, a little a bit of an update here, guys. I did take my profits. Remember, I showed you guys some positions on Eli Lilly, GIS, and Baxter, uh, BAX. I did take my profits on Eli Lilly. I was up decently on that position. I banked that profit. I also took profits on the GIS. So that got a very nice bounce here. It's probably going to bounce more, but I wanted to book some of my profits because the market was looking a little bit weak and these stocks were doing generally well. I'm still holding my Baxter as I do think that this will still rally back off of this level further. If we zoom out, we can see how much downside that's had. And in fact, if we flip to the weekly chart, I do think that, again, this is a major technical area on the weekly chart. Look at all this kind of sideways consolidation right in here. And that's exactly where we are right in there. So we should see some sort of bounce on Baxter, I would think, in this vicinity. I'm still holding on to that position. Okay, I'm going to jump over here, guys. Let's come across here. Let's talk some cryptocurrency. So crypto, we saw a beautiful move up. Now remember, this is the beauty of it. And by the way, I'm riding a long in Bitcoin with members of Verified Investing Crypto at verifiedinvesting.com, and we are in the money nicely. I do, however, happen to think that this is going to be huge. This area right in here, pivot point here, also this pivot point, those two pivots coexist with this area. So once you're above 31,000, let's say we touch, in fact, I think in the overnight we might have even kissed 31,000, you have to start to get a little bit more careful on Bitcoin. All right, now could it break through this high? It sure, certainly could, but as a technician, you need to respect this. All right, doesn't mean it can't break above it, but you need to respect it. And that's the key, guys. So watch this. Bitcoin, again, beautiful move to the upside. We've seen some amazing moves in the altcoin market. Um, speaking of altcoin moves, let's take a look at some of them that I highlighted last week. This was a beautiful one. Remember this pattern on Matic. Matic again, here was your wedge pattern, beautiful wedge here. We had this pivot low with this pivot low with this and this and this and this. And I talked about potentially a breakout and that's exactly what has happened. Now again, I don't necessarily believe it's altcoin season. Like you'll hear all these people like, oh, it's altcoin season. Not necessarily. I mean, things bounce. If you looked at this chart, it was due for some sort of bounce. That's just the nature of it. Things get bounces and they should. A breakout like this, right, does not necessarily mean that all of a sudden it's a new bull market. It just means that it was due for a bounce. Now, one of the things you have to respect about this is that already you've come into some resistance. If we look at this pivot top and we draw a line right across, that it coexists with this top. So that is resistance. If it gets through there, your next level is going to be right up here, which is right around the 28 cent level. I could see this going maybe as high as 30 to 31 cents, but then I would start to get a little bit more on the bearish side of uh, Cardano. Okay, so right now Cardano looks good. It's had a big move. It's into resistance. But again, maybe if it can break through here, it has a little bit more to go. But be cautious here. I am not in the camp that all of a sudden this is a new bull market in crypto. 
I am not. We don't have those signals yet in the markets. And by the way, one of the issues that I have is that far too many people have gotten very bullish on crypto again. And again, it, what's so interesting is that if you look at the stock market, the bullishness is much slower to take hold. All right, slower. Like if you look at the October lows, people didn't, when, when October lows bounced 3%, people weren't like, oh, we're going to new all-time highs. It actually took on the NASDAQ, and I want to show you guys this. This is pretty remarkable. All right, so if we go to the NASDAQ chart here, and we look at the October lows, in fact, let's zoom out here and go back here, right? So on the NASDAQ, this is mind-blowing, but this kind of shows you how crazy the crypto markets are and how you have to be careful with them, is that when we made these lows, no one was saying new all-time high. New all-time high talk didn't come in until you were all the way up here, all right? And then look at the top being put in right there, and now we're starting to come back down. And by the way, I still remember arguing with people, even talking about this in interviews, how I was saying, no, we're not going to new all-time highs right here. You're going to actually roll over. But again, that's for another discussion on the charts. All right. Um, quickly going to the chart of Matic real fast here. Matic, good breakup as well, but it is starting to stall out. Just keep an eye on this same chart, right? Same thing. Right in here, you have resistance. And then right over here, same kind of deal. And it's a great run. Percentage-wise, it's a nice run, 20% move, maybe even about 25% from peak to trough, but it's starting to hit resistance on the altcoins. Okay, let's jump into the gold chart. Let's go to the gold chart here as we scan through. Um, we are looking at a level on gold. I talked about it last week in the game plan on Friday. I said, guys, be ready for a pullback in gold. Gold, again, is at a level where you have to anticipate a little pullback. Now, you know I'm the biggest gold, gold mid to long term bull out there. I'm a huge fan. I think it's continuing to go higher. But remember, that doesn't mean you can't be a bear in the near term. And I think this is something that many investors don't understand, but I hope more of you do. A lot of you guys that are watching do. It's that just because you're bullish doesn't mean you have to be a perma bull in all time frames. Right? You can say, oh, it's a little bit overbought. You can admit that. You can be like, listen, I'm long gold, and I have, a, I have a big gold position. I do. It doesn't mean I have to be like, no, gold is going up. I don't care what anyone else says. It's never coming down. Like, no, dude, be realistic, right? Be realistic and look at the chart. That's why the charts are here. Pivot high to pivot high, so you just get a pullback. You don't have to make a million dollars overnight. People are so greedy like that. Like, let your position play out. If your long-term thesis is intact, who cares about the short-term movement? I'm a short-term trader for the most part, but I do have long-term positions in gold. Again, small pullback so far today, this would be your max drawdown, back to your trend line, scene of the crime. We know that term, scene of the crime. And then potentially the next leg can start. Now, it doesn't have to pull back here. It could go like this and then break up. But the point is, you're overbought into resistance, let it consolidate. It's stronger. The worst charts in the world are ones that don't pull back and they go straight up. Those are the charts that collapse back down. The best charts are stair steps like this. This is the best, strongest chart out there because what it's doing is it's consolidating and digesting and building strength for the next move, building strength, next move, building strength, next move, etc. Those are the charts that will be in the longest bull market that you want. Those are the most consistent bull markets. All right, it's those crazy vertical moves that come crashing down because people end up honestly holding the bag. They buy at the highs and you see what happens as we come down. All right, let's go to the oil chart now. Oil. A lot of talk about the Mideast, guys, and it's a horrendous situation. Breaks my heart, honestly. It really does. But I'm, my job is to look at the charts. And the charts, again, as much as people are saying, oh, the Middle East is going to erupt in this, and we're going to see $120 oil, I just don't see it. The charts, and when I say I don't see it, it's because the charts are not telling me that at this point. Doesn't mean it can't change. But again, what we clearly see here is you have a defined pivot high. We pulled back, and we've made a bearish retrace. Generally, this is the next move on oil. Now, again, if we did see the Mideast erupt, would oil potentially go up? Sure, but then it has to contend with double top. Okay, that would be your next level right there. The fact that things have gotten as bad as they have in the Mideast, and you've only seen this retrace, that should tell you everything you need to know. If the oil traders, and these are like billion-dollar firms, 
multi-billion dollar firms that have so much in tune with what's going on in the oil markets. If they're not running oil up, it should be telling us something as well. Always remember, big money's way ahead of you and I. It's just the nature of it. It's way, way ahead of you and I. All right. I know you guys were waiting on Nat Gas from last week. I promised it, but ran out of time. Here's your Nat Gas chart. I called for a pullback. Remember, we talked about a breakout. We got our breakout, and I said, listen, guys, it needs to retrace. I unloaded with members at Verified Investing Alerts, which is my stock and commodity service, that we unloaded the UNG up in this upper range. It's now pulled back beautifully. I am looking to rebuy at a retrace to the scene of the crime. Pivot high. Pivot high. Well, missed it there, but pivot high there. Pivot high right there. We broke out. What's happening now? Retrace to the zone here, that's your buy level. So you're talking $3 or so on that gas, give or take a few pennies, that is gonna be your rebuy. Now it doesn't guarantee a win, but the beautiful thing about it is we have a very defined level here, right? So look at this trend line. So the way you would trade this, if you were to trade it, and again, that's totally up to you, but basically if you buy here at three, you keep a stop with confirmation right here. If you start trading below, you stop out. Very defined chart setup this way. And those are the best ones. All right. And the reason being is if this trend line breaks, you're probably honestly going down here to somewhere in this lower range. So again, you can buy here. Here's your risk somewhere in that vicinity. The idea is that probabilities should tell us that we're going up like this. If it doesn't happen because probabilities are not 100%, you know where you exit right in this lower range right down here. All right, guys, I was going to go over Apple's chart today, um, and I was going to go over Microsoft and, and uh, Meta's chart today and so forth, but honestly, I'm running out of time, so I got to conclude it here. But listen, let's jump back to the center screen. There's so much good stuff out there in terms of trading opportunities. Remember, when there's a bear market in crypto, there's a bull market somewhere else. Where there's a, When there's a bear market in stocks, there's a bull market somewhere else. If you're a true investor, you can find these things. It takes some work, but one of the things to remember is that charts are the one true thing we have in life when it comes to investing, all right? We're not going to crypto Twitter. We're not going to the news media. We look for ourselves and we say, here's your support, here's your resistance. And that's how we formulate what we have in our minds, seeing if we're right or if we're wrong. And so learn the charts, spend a little time on the charts. Five minutes a day will change your life, I promise. Even just watching these game plans, I truly believe what I'm showing you is going to change your outlook on investing. So thank you for tuning in to the game plan. My name again is Gareth Soloway. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on YouTube. I love you all. Thank you for your kind words. I'll see you tomorrow.